What you just saw was one of the most important factors when it comes to transitioning complex Phalaenopsis hybrids from one media into LECA and self-watering. Flushing, flushing, flushing. So, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I appreciate it. It was a request from Daniel Gilan. And Daniel, I hear you. I understand your frustration. I have had my share of anxiety, frustration, apprehension for approximately three, four years. This was way before I started posting videos on YouTube. So what I'm going to tell you now is basically how I went about and tried to correct my mistakes by trying to figure out why everybody finds these orchids so easy to grow and I just couldn't get a grip on them. One of the very, very obvious things would be to say, well, just grow them in bark. But I'm a little bit stubborn in that sense. <laughs> I grew Phalaenopsis complex hybrids in bark very, very successfully in my second collection and would have been able to revert to that and move on and be happy and not have subjected myself to all the frustration that I experienced in the past. But having said all that, if I hadn't persevered and continued, I probably wouldn't be able to make this video for you now. So here's one thing, perseverance, don't give up. And I hope that this video is going to shorten the time frame, the learning curve for everyone that watches this video and get it right the next go around as opposed to waiting three years trying to figure it out. Another one that I want to eliminate is complex hybrid phalaenopsis are easy. We all have orchids in our collection that we consider easy, but that may not apply to everybody because everybody's environment and grow methods can differ, especially when it comes to indoor, outdoor growing. And I include greenhouses when I mention environment. Even the environment of growing of complex Phalaenopsis hybrid as a house plant. So the easy part is all relative depending on each grower's successes with particular orchids. Across the board, we have orchids we consider easy, but on the other side of the fence, somebody is saying, I can't make it work for me. Let's take a hint from why we call these complex Phalaenopsis hybrids. The word complex here gives it away. These were both bought in a garden center because our stores don't really carry them, but they're the same as you would get in big box stores, DIYs, in some cases, supermarkets, where you buy them from is really not that relevant because a garden center should be able to take care of their complex Phalaenopsis hybrids prior to them being sold on. But as we know, they don't care for them in any different way. It's a commodity. Complex is the entire parentage behind a hybrid of a Phalaenopsis. It's complex. There is so much in that hybrid that we can't even figure out where did it all start. And complex is also the word that I keep in mind in the back of my head that says they are not easy growers. They have their personalities and they should be respected just like any other orchid in our collection or that we buy online that we cannot get in these commercial establishments. Just because we see them everywhere doesn't take away from the fact that they are an orchid and should be given the exact amount of attention when it comes to repotting, fertilizing, light requirements, temperature requirements, and more often than not, because they are mass produced, they become a little bit more cumbersome to grow in our home because they are pumped full with hormones. Anything that speeds up the growth and increases the flowering, they have the right light where they come from, the right environment where they come from. Then they are getting shipped and then they arrive in the garden center and then they come to our home. And I'm telling you, by the time they have left wherever they were grown to be sold on to wherever they're going to end up, by the time they've left that environment, are on their way in their crate to their final destination being your home, the stress has already started prior to you getting it into your house. It's not like when we buy these complex Phalaenopsis that we should assume that they are easy. Let's just say you have an orchid haul from a renowned nursery and you've got all these fancy orchids coming into your collection. How do you approach getting them established into your environment? You are much more aware of their needs. You're much more aware of them growing new roots. You are much more aware of how the light will be while they acclimate into your environment. And yet when it comes to these commercially grown Phalaenopsis that we get into our house, all that seems to go out the window. 
We don't even consider the acclimating part because we bought them locally. But where did they come from in order to reach your home by the time you've bought them locally? Acclimating still applies to every orchid that moves even from the garden center to your home if the garden center is five minutes away or four hours away, it doesn't matter. They have to acclimate. And then what we do is we think, oh, it's a phalaenopsis and I'm going to put it into fresh media. Even if it's bark, if it's going back into bark or back into sphagnum moss, and we immediately deal with the orchid and clean them up and then put them in fresh media and think, great, job done. What we haven't considered is the acclimating process. We haven't considered the temperature. We haven't considered how much light we can provide. We haven't considered any stage of growth of the orchid either. And please take note that I'm saying we because that was me four or five years ago. I was lucky when I was growing them in bark. I consider that pure luck. I don't consider that me knowing what I was doing at the time. And I had the same approach when I wanted to put them into Lekka and self-watering. It's a plant. Lekka self-watering. No biggie. That was my first mistake, assuming that what happened successfully last time will work just as well in a completely different setup. So right off the bat, my biggest mistake was the ignorance to the fact that these are orchids just like any others and they need exactly the same kind of consideration when it comes to changing their media, their setup and even their environment. So the first thing I would recommend is wait. Don't go into the pot straight away. Don't clean up the media straight away. Don't put it into fresh media straight away. Give them time to acclimate to your environment. That can be two weeks, that can be a month. But then of course, immediately the point comes up, oh, but the media is broken down. It's probably acidic. It's gonna destroy my roots, etc. Well, those roots would already be on their way out. Whether you get into the pot and clean it up, as soon as you get the orchid home or you eliminate at least a certain time frame of stress and then get into the orchid after maybe a period of a month of acclimating it into your environment, the roots would be deteriorating anyway. Getting into them immediately will deteriorate them if they were already on their way out. And then of course, by the time you get into the orchid after its acclimation time period, they are going to deteriorate. But getting into the pot sooner is not gonna change that. The only thing that it's going to do is add another level of stress to the orchid that at this point in time it doesn't need. And the next thing would be, well, my orchid was already growing new roots when I brought it home. So I went straight into the pot because, you know, new root growth and then we pot the orchid up when we get new root growth. This is very true and highly recommended. So I'm going to give you another thought on that side. You've got new root growth, again your orchid's just gotten home and you immediately attack the pot, clean it up and pot it up into fresh media. Change the setup because new root growth and setup change goes hand in hand. We haven't even considered the acclimating time period, we're just going straight ahead and now I'm asking you what time of year was this? What season? Fall, winter? Spring, summer? What are your temperatures? Because once again, remember where the orchid came from. Perfect environment. Acclimating shock will take about four to six weeks to happen. And by that time, you are bringing your orchid home. Location A to final destination, four to six weeks. It is in shock. It is under stress. The root tips that you see will probably stop growing whether you do something or don't do something simply because the orchid has blooms. That's why you brought it home. So the main focus for the orchid at this point in time is the blooms and the buds. They still have to open. They still have to bloom out. You want to see the blooms. And an orchid that is not acclimated to its location that hasn't settled in can only do one of two things. It wants to bloom because that is its main function the reproduction of its kind. You want the blooms because that's why you brought it home. The root growth is going to stall or stop. So switching it that quickly into its new setup, new media, because you see active root growth, more often than not means absolutely nothing for what the orchid is doing. Something that we all hate doing, but I would actually say this is what we should be doing. When we bring the orchid home, we want to enjoy the blooms, but to help the orchid, we should cut the spikes and still do nothing, let it acclimate for four weeks, and then, depending on the season, either we can clean up the media and change its setup. You see, cutting the spikes will actually reduce another stress factor for the acclimating process. But who wants to cut a spike that we've just brought home and we want to enjoy the orchid? 
It's a decision that each and every one of us has to make for themselves. Once we cut a spike off an orchid, the hormones start to kick in with active growth, and that includes roots, also structures. Acclimating a Phalaenopsis to our environment is no different. We should cut the spikes so that the hormones have a time to settle in and acclimate more easily and eliminate a stress factor. We don't do that, and that is also fine. I'm not suggesting that you have to do that. I'm giving you pointers as to why these complex Phalaenopsis are a little bit harder to just get going than we would actually expect. Because so many people say, oh, they're so easy to grow. They're not. Just like with any other orchid, if we get something wrong, it's going to get set back. It's going to stall or die. So now let's say, because these are forced blooms, we bring them home because we're desperate for some color in our grow space. They obviously bombard us with these beautiful blooming Phalaenopsis during Christmas time, Valentine's Day, etc. Now, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, that's winter. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you're in luck because we are gonna talk about the temperature, how these orchids would prefer to live and grow as opposed to what we have to deal with in our climate. You see, they are warm growers. We can say my temperature is a steady 18 degrees Celsius. We can also say, well, if I'm comfortable with regards to the temperature in my home and I'm not feeling cold, then my Phalaenopsis isn't either. And that is true to a degree. We can also say we are supplementing with artificial light. All very true. But we're dealing with live things that have a little biorhythm of its own within its system. And we need to respect and honor that little biorhythm that every orchid has. And if the orchid is blooming, the inner biorhythm is focusing on the blooms. So if you're going to go and change your media or change the setup during a time of year where it actually is blooming, there will be no active growth. And then the roots that are accustomed to what could be nasty media, they get fresh media or they go into a setup that's completely different, they will rot. They will either dry out because the fresh media hasn't got the same kind of humidity, wet environment around it, or they will be in a wetter environment, more airy environment, because believe it or not, Lekka is more airy than any degrading media that the orchid comes with. And the velamen is not adapted to that environment. It has not changed its characteristics for any kind of growth or nutrient absorption with regards to new growth because it is blooming and then we are in trouble. So even if we respect the ambient temperature of a complex hybrid Phalaenopsis, including light levels, we cannot be ignoring the fact that the condition of the roots is in such a way set up for the pot that it came in. And many times, even though we mean well by changing the media, taking advantage of active root growth, active being relative and changing the whole setup, we will fail because the internal clock of the orchid is not going to react. And with that, the roots are going to die. And from there on in, what you already brought to your home was already a stressed orchid. And now it really, really is stressed out and will probably collapse. So I'm not trying to freak anybody out with saying what I'm saying. I'm just trying to point out the realistic approach to Phalaenopsis complex hybrids. It is absolutely unrealistic of us to expect these orchids to be any different from any other orchid that we bring into our home, simply because we bought them locally. The one factor that changed everything for me when I finally felt like I had cracked the code of transitioning Phalaenopsis orchids into Lekka and self-watering without them collapsing on me was temperature. And let me just tell you, in the first two years of me growing my orchids in my dining room slash grow space, I was using heat mats and I was supplementing the winters with additional heat. My dining room area never dropped below 20 degrees Celsius and all Phalaenopsis orchids were on heat mats. And I still lost a considerable amount of them because the roots rotted. And then in the summer, just because of scale, which yeah, that was another learning curve. But first of all, let's get these orchids to grow. Root rot, even though on heat mats, and I had my temperatures at 20 degrees Celsius throughout the months of November, December, January, February, and March, being warm growers. And I did do the transition and I still lost orchids. 
methods. So the temperature, we can say, yes, I've got all the supplementing going on, and yet they still fail. These orchids want the temperature of the ambient air and the time of year to be right for them in order for them to be in their active growth. And that would obviously be the summer, not even spring, summer. I'm going to just emphasize summer because that is when all the hormones are gunning for active growth. New leaves start in summer, root extension starts in summer, new roots start in summer. The bloom phase is usually from December through to May. If your orchid is new into your collection during that time period and it is in bloom, 90% of the time it is not going to start any active growth because it is also acclimating. If you were to cut your spike the minute you get your orchid home, you give it a little bit of a head start because you've reduced the stress and then the hormones can start to mobilize themselves for active growth and you can bring the active growth period forward maybe to June, mid-May and then that would be the time to transition and transition successfully. If the hormones are not in active growth, if the orchid is not acclimated, no matter what you do for your ambient temperature using heat mats or anything like that, cleaning up an orchid pot and putting it into new media, be it bark or change the setup entirely into inorganic growing, it will not prove very successful. And for me, that was the biggest key moment of realizing that I can provide everything for an orchid artificially, but if the orchid is not ready to go and the hormones in the orchid are not supporting the growth period, then everything I attempted to do throughout the months of November through March was futile. I was working against the natural pattern of the orchid, putting it under much more stress than it already was, exhausting it with the blooms that I was enjoying, and then I'm transitioning it. Something's going to go wrong. And it did for many of my phalaenopsis, and I'm very, very sorry for that. So this was kind of a lengthy discussion, but there are certain points that I wanted to draw from so that I'm not just banging out instructions and saying, here you go. I'm giving you a reason why I'm saying what I'm saying and how to go about turning that around and making it work for a successful transition or just a successful repot. Temperature was paramount and that I'm talking about the seasonal temperature, not what we provide artificially. Not being fooled by active root growth in the middle of December when the orchid came from a perfect environment and has just gone through the stress of arriving in your home in full bloom. Those roots won't progress much. And then one final point that you might find interesting. Evaporative cooling is something that does happen in a pot with LECA. That's normal. We are now speaking about warm growers where the temperature of the roots might be lower than it really, really likes. And that could be the case. But I can assure you that an orchid that is successfully transitioned into LECA and self-watering, by the time the winter comes around, the evaporative cooling will have no adverse effects on the root system at all. Which is a little detail that I find super, super interesting. But put that onto the orchid the moment you get it home, thinking you've got active root growth while the orchid is in bloom and came from a perfect environment, is in the process of acclimating under duress, it's not going to work. Once established, and I'm telling you, they will take to it very, very quickly, if the transition happens during the summer months, while they're in active growth, by the time the winter comes around, they will take to this setup like a new fish just arrived in your pond. They will absolutely love it. They will not object to being in inorganic media and coming out of organic media. And then when the next winter comes, comes around, they are settled in, they're doing well, and they will not be bothered by evaporative cooling. I really hope that this was helpful. I know it was a chatty one. I really hope that a little bit of background and the reasoning behind why I say what I say and the recommendations that I just gave are helpful to anybody that's standing in front of the complex Phalaenopsis hybrid, scratching their heads, hearing that they're easy to grow and yet not successful at it themselves. And if you're still here with me, I really appreciate it very much. I just want to let you know that I've been there watching the Orchid Rooms videos 
on her phalaenopsis in self-watering. And I was just sitting there wondering, how does she do it? We had a lot of little messages, exchanges back and forth, troubleshooting what I was getting wrong. And I would look at all her phalaenopsis, looking enormous, beautiful, the blooms, amazing. I never figured out how and why she was successful and what her little golden nugget was, but it really made me dig deep and think about why I'm not getting it right. And then in 2020, Bubblicious came into my life and I transitioned her in July and she is alive and kicking it in that pot. It's absolutely a joy. And her first winter with me was absolutely Hakuna Matata because she was established in the pot. Evaporative cooling out the window. She doesn't care. None of them care. But let me just say what you saw at the beginning, the flushing during the transition phase. The flushing is fundamental for the health of the orchid to draw oxygen into the pot because roots love oxygen and water carries a lot of oxygen plus the gravity pulling the oxygen through the pot. You do that during the transition phase every third day with clean water and set the pot back into fertilized water because the orchid is in active growth. I would be very close, not that I'm a gambling person, but very close to placing a bet and saying, that orchid is gonna do really, really well. Don't be discouraged, persevere. Any questions on what I've just said today, I can either link you a video or several videos, and if I cannot do that, I will answer them. Use the comment section to your advantage. Thank you very, very much for watching. Your time is so appreciated. I hope you have yourself a beautiful day. One condition though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.